airport? Yeah. Anyway, we weren't talking city mess this evening. We have two great guests that are going to be joining us, two women. This is Sister Biz. So we're going to be talking to two women who are both entrepreneurs. One has a nonprofit. Um, and she's Jackie Cummings is going to be speaking to us shortly. And then we have another that um, is also an entrepreneur that we're going to speak to in another show because she actually is just getting um, federal contracting started. She's going to talk about her SBA process, getting certified, but we're going to do that another week. But she's going to talk about some of her activism uh, starting at 730. So we're waiting for our first guest to come on. But until then, we can uh, catch up on some things. Like, so you were telling me about the report. Yeah, you were telling me about yeah. that report. I was just actually reading it. I'm catching up. Uh, Fox broke the story today about the OIG investigation um, in regards to an audit. Well, no, an auction house that apparently did not pay the city and the city sued the auction house. Uh, what concerns me is that for whatever reason, they don't release the names of the auction house. Like, I'm curious to know. Uh, who it is i think i have my suspicions because i but know something like this happened before i remember there being an auction an issue with an auction and something it's the same one on. i believe because they said twice they mentioned twice they said the first time they were not paid close to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars we're not talking like seven dollars and fifty cent we're talking so the, the city auction thing oh yes and then they weren't being paid by the auction house they get weren't getting the money yes I, i've seen that before though this isn't new or it's happened, that's well, how could it happen crazy. twice if it happened once? Oh, but know. twice with the same company. So my thing is, is that right. where, I mean, I'm I'm grateful, I guess, that the city did go after, they did sue them, but they only got back like 95,000 out of almost what, a million? A million dollars. Because yeah. the first time they hit them with 750 or something. Wow. And then the second time it's like 500. So wow. that's like, one million two hundred and fifty. That's a lot of paper. Well, that's okay, a lot so of look, paper. Wow. I guess she's backstage. We are going to get back to the Baltimore city politics because she is not having it. She's here to talk about her nonprofit. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Uh, yeah. We. I got to catch up on that. We're going to have to talk mm -hmm. about that. So I want to introduce you all to Jackie Cummings. Hi, How are you, Jackie. I'm wonderful. How are you? Great. Great, thank you. Um, so thanks for joining us. I know you're really busy. Um, I wanted you to introduce yourself, um, talk about who you are, and then we'll get into your nonprofit. Is that okay? Looks like she's frozen. Um, hold on a second. Her connection's a little frozen. Jackie, you may want to get out and then get back in again so that we can connect a little better. So Jackie will be back. Oh, Text she's back. Stuff. Hold on. Let me uh, bring her back in. The connection's a little slow, Jackie. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I don't know. what. Yeah, I can hear you. I don't know. Going in and out. It's on a, it's got a full five bar. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, so I was saying that we wanted you to introduce yourself and talk about your nonprofit, but it does seem like you keep freezing. Um, I don't know if you have anything else on your network. Okay, you're moving now. So go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. I am Jackie Cummings. And Notre Maison Connects. Jackie, I don't want the audio. Not good. I take it by the Hold on. I think there's a bit of a delay. Can you um log out and then try to come back in again? I'm gonna Let me try. Yeah. Okay, I'll try to get you back in. Because I don't want them to miss any of this. Yeah, so we talk about equity and uh <laughs> internet. It's it's just the, the speed in the city sometimes is questionable. I wonder what did you know? Is. Did you know that when you go and you research like uh, neighborhoods uh, with planning, they actually show you the the amount of people that actually have internet coverage um, in that neighborhood? I thought that was very interesting wow. um, to see. Yeah, yeah, because wow. and you'd be surprised that um, how many neighborhoods don't. 
have access to quality internet and stuff. So. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. I know when, when I was in Ashburton, I had a lot of issues with my internet. It's always an issue. Wow. Is yeah. it because of the trees or? I thought so. It's, it's just very slow. So I had issues. So um, yeah, but she'll get back in. She's We're going to try it again because she really has some good information that I don't want anyone to miss any of it. So hi. That's hi. All. Okay. That's this looks better. Great. Okay. 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 Good. Hello, ladies. How are you this evening? I'm fine. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And did you have any questions? My yeah, we wanted you to introduce yourself, um, talk about your nonprofit. So just introduce who you are, what you do, and talk about the premise of your nonprofit. Okay, sure thing. So my name is Jackie Cummins. I am the founder of Notre Maison Connects, a nonprofit organization. We work with 18 to 21-year-olds. We teach them financial literacy, computer literacy. We teach them resume writing skills, entrepreneurship. We introduce them to different entrepreneurs in our buildings on 25th Street. We have four commercial buildings on 25th Street under executive suites at Notre Maison and in those four buildings are 29 black owned businesses. So our youth in our program get an opportunity to actually uh, meet some of the business owners. And they also get an opportunity to ask them questions and talk to them and know what they do about business. Um, in our youth program, we teach them, we pay for them to go to driving school. We pay for their uh, CPR first aid certification. We also take them out next month. We're going fishing and uh, on a yacht, on a chartered, chartered yacht. Um, so we're very excited about that. We work with another nonprofit organization called Urban Outdoor Adventures. And um, we're very excited about that. In November, they're going to an open house through um, one of our board members is a realtor, so he's taking them to an open house. We have um, we work with our community partners, so they'll be attending class at a, a class at PNC Bank as well. So we teach wow. them as much about life, real life, <laughs> as possible. We also have an English teacher that's coming in to teach grammar skills because. What we found out last uh, in our last youth session was that some of the youth didn't even know how to reply to an email. Didn't even know how to reply. So some of our youth between 18 and you catered at youth 18 to what age? 23? 18 to 21. And they didn't know how to reply to an email. No. no. I'm, I'm impressed by the resumes. Um, you know, because I mean, I see some of the resumes that we've uh, received and um, traumatizing, and wow. these are from and it, and when I I mean like you'll have people that's been on the jobs uh, multiple jobs, you know like ten, and that they only stayed on a month. Some stuff you gonna probably try to minimize, I would think, because that kind of shows a pattern. You know what I mean? So yeah. you're you're not going to necessarily get hired because that person is gonna think you're gonna leave. Right. Um, down to the misspelled words, you know what I mean? So I think that the resume writing is imperative. And, and those to me are skills for survival. You yes. know, they could be, to me, they should be taught in school. It should be some type of class, you know what I mean? Uh, Cause basically our kids are being turned out unprepared and it's not just in Baltimore, it's everywhere. You That's know, true. that, 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 you know, people don't have that. And the driving portion, let me tell you, because I've never seen in the city, it's like people don't believe you need a driver's license. It's a lot of young people that drive and don't have a license. And I've found that even some of their parents don't have licenses. So then you understand how it falls down, how it trickles down. And one of the pieces that I really, one of the reasons why I really want to do the whole driver's education piece is that I I am still a full-time school counselor. I just love what I do. I really do love what I do. So um, one of the things that I, I heard on the news one year, it just broke my heart. I had a, I had a young man, was one of my students. He was in a stolen car and he was running from the police. He hit a parked car and killed three people. And to see his face flash across the news and know 
how respectful and gentle this young man was in my office at all times. It just it just crushed me. And just knowing uh, growing up, people that I grew up with, uh, one young man, he got into a car accident without having a driver's license, and he wasn't able to get his driver's license until he was nearly 30. So it's just things that, that make it very difficult for young people to get uh, employment even. With a driver's license, they become much more employable. So we just want to make them better equipped as possible and also making the streets safer. Wow, you're doing great work. So, so what drove you? Well, well, first off, let's talk about your commercial business because you're you're an entrepreneur. So you're a full time school counselor. Yes. You own commercial property, which I have seen, and I have been in actually. I think, and and it's just this row of really nice, well maintained Thank buildings you. on Twenty Fifth Street. They look amazing, and I know exactly where they are. So, and you have all these black businesses there. Yes. Um, you know, how, what made you decide to do that and then focus and have just black business, all these black businesses coming through there and then connect us to what made you start the nonprofit? Like what drove you to start that? Well, for the for the businesses, um, I divorced my husband of 13 years. And uh, before I divorced my husband, I was doing this little meet and greet kind of thing in our house where we as adults would sit and chat and talk about different things very openly. We would have like potluck dinner and things like that. And it just kind of grew. And so then I decided to uh, just take it to the next level. And I brought a I, I brought a building on 25th Street. My first building was a rat infested shell for $20,000. I sold another property. I have recently sold another property that I had purchased and I was able to purchase the bill 18 West 25th Street, fix it up and put a business in there in an apartment on the third floor. So myself and our two uh, young daughters lived on the third floor and we had a business, a tea house on the first and second floor. And we did open mic and poetry for 14 years. We hosted baby showers and birthday parties and CD release parties and when CDs were out. <laughs> and we just did a lot of really cool things. And Notre Maison is French for our house. So it was really creating that kind of environment where people really felt good and comfortable about coming in. And I remember when we had a blizzard and um, it shut the city down. Well, people were calling me after a couple of days, like, is it going to be poetry Thursday? I'm tired of being in the house. I'm like, it's nowhere to park. It's just nowhere to park. But people came in, honey, they parked on a, on a parking lot across the street at the Safeway Market, and they just trudged through the snow. They came in, they took their shoes off at the door, and we just had a good old time. It wasn't a full house. It was a couple of people friends who wanted to get out of the house. So I, I love being able to provide that kind of opportunity for people. And when people would come in and they would have private birthday parties and people would come in and say, oh, well, what's this place? This is nice. I've never been here. And it'd be quiet because upstairs was the open space. And then it, you, I sit down at the door and I say, oh, you looking for? Oh, oh, she just went upstairs. And then, and then they go upstairs and you hear everybody say, surprise! <laughs> and so I, I really love that. But um, in 2000, uh, about nine, somewhere around there, Acorn Housing closed. And then when Acorn Housing shut down, my really good friend who was a real estate agent and whose, build, whose office was in 20 West 25th Street told me that 1416 was available. I was like, okay. She's like, Jake. You should look into it. I was like, what am I doing with that? But all right, I'm going to look. And so I looked and I said, okay, I want it. And uh, and I and I purchased it and I did a lot of work. I put in a lot of sweat equity and I fixed it up and, and just started bringing in businesses. I would fix up in the office, close the door, and then... I'm trying so to hear this. Um, okay. It froze a little bit. Sorry. And it, and it just and it just kept on rolling like that. 
And, and I'll tell you, and I, and I love to share this because I want to be able to give as many people as possible hope, right? So when I purchased the building, I was supposed to get an uh, uh, acquisition and rehab loan. And the company that was going to give me the loan shut it down at the last minute. So they took $7,000 and shut it down. And I was devastated. But I said, Lord, if you want me to do this, I, I, I have to know which way I'm going. Do I shut down now or do I persevere? And I, and, and, and I just persevered. And I went to the table. And when I left the table, I had $3,000 to my name to get over $50,000 worth of work done. And I just... Learned how to do a lot of stuff on you from YouTube University, <laughs> and I just kept on doing it. I thank God for my brothers, one of them has since passed, um, and my younger brother who came in and helped and just did and just helped me get it together. And one tenant after another after another just kept on building and building, and we just kept on going from there. Now, so, okay, wow, okay. that's amazing. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nicole. No, I'm just trying to figure out what side of the street. Are, are you on the Safeway side or across the street? Across the street. Mm -hmm. It's those great gray buildings that look okay. like with all the businesses in them. And okay. I'm just so glad a black woman owns them. That's amazing. I didn't know. You did that. You, wow. you did that. Hey, that's wow. Amazing. That is amazing. Right. At being divorced, you, you, I mean, that's. That's such a story, you know, because most women will say, oh, you know, I, I, you know, I can't survive or, you know, just you, you really, you Thank set you something off for yourself. So congratulations. Thank you. And it's, it's such a blessing. People say, oh, well, that's your dream. No, that's not my dream. My dream was to have healthy, productive babies, <laughs> healthy, productive children that are doing good, that are independent. And that's what, that's, that was my dream and to be happy. Uh, I just want to be happy. And so um, this is a blessing that I am truly grateful for. And because it's been such an amazing blessing, I appreciate being able to provide this kind of blessing for so many other Black people who want to start business, who have started business, but has not been given the opportunity. And so when opportunities present themselves to me, I set myself in position to be able to take full advantage of it. So just in July, I purchased our fourth building on the same block. So we had 14, 16, 18, and 34. Congratulations I'm loving to it. you. I, I, yes, love, I it. love it. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. So Thanks. let me ask you, do you, are you teaching the kids? Um, well, they're not kids, the young yes. adults. That's because let me tell you, I preach it all the time. We have to have more home ownership and not just that. Uh, as much ownership as possible. And wow, I salute you for doing that because it is, it's uh, economic development. If we don't own anything, how can we, we really don't have a voice because if we go back in history, that that's how they used to define it. If you didn't own land. Right. That's why they took a lot of ours and <laughs> still is. So you got to think it about is. it. So what did uh, you what made you decide to start the nonprofit? And then I, when, I, when you look on your site, I went to Notra Mason's site, Connect site, and mm -hmm. I did see that you have people in Florida, you've got outreach, you've got people all over New Orleans. Um, you, you're, you're, I mean, it's like when you do something, you clearly do it big, Jackie. <laughs> um, so explain the whole, the, I mean, you got someone in California, you got yeah. people everywhere, Jackie. Yes. Tell yes. us about that. So, okay. So, my uh, youngest daughter lives in California. She knew that um, I wanted to go to Maripoi, France, to visit a friend who was getting married who had moved to France. He was at, He's actually a performer, and he performed here in Baltimore. He would only perform at, at Notre Maison Tea House. So he came here, he performed, and we always stayed in touch. And um, he was getting married, and when he invited me to the wedding. I really wanted to come. What? Go to France? I'm all in. I'm so excited. But it was the end of August, the beginning of September, and it would have meant that I was going to have to take time out of the first week of school, and I could not do that. As a school counselor, a high school counselor, I absolutely could not do it. So I was I, I was upset. I can't lie. Um, but I had to be responsible. And so 
my daughter knew I was pretty upset about it. So she said, I'm going to take you to St. Thomas. And I said, that's not France, but I'm grateful. <laughs> And so she took me to she took me to St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, and we had a wonderful time. Everybody there was just so sweet and humble. And they they didn't care about fancy hockey books. They didn't care about fancy shoes. None of that. None of that mattered. And they had the, some of the most beautiful beaches I had been to. And when we were about to leave, our plane was grounded because of Hurricane Irma. And we were afraid we were going to be stuck on the island through a hurricane. So the next day, I, so my daughter who took me, her name is Erin. Erin got on the on the plane, I mean, on the phone. Now, you think I'm a firecracker? That one there? Whew. So Erin got on the phone and she got the last single seat. I said, take it. They only had one seat. I said, take that seat go to New Orleans because her fiance was in New Orleans waiting for her, even though they lived in California. I said, take that, go. I'm mom. I'm good. Okay. Inside I was crumbling. I was so afraid and I didn't know where I was going to go because we had already checked out our resort and everything. But um, the guy on Spirit Airline got me the last, like he said, look, he said, don't cry. He said, if somebody comes late, I'm going to give you their, their, their seat. They're just going to miss their flight. And I said, okay. So he got me on somebody's seat in somebody's seat. And I was able to get off the island. And I was so thankful that it took me months to decide how I wanted, as an individual person, how I wanted to get back. But I knew I needed to get back because when I looked at the damage done to the island and I saw all of the damage and even the resort we stayed in, I, I just broke down in tears. I'm like, oh my God, that really could have been me. I would have been stuck there and I would have I would have lost it. I would have I would have cried and some more stuff, but I would have been stuck and not being able to communicate because their power lines and everything was down. We went back a year later and they power lines and stuff was still now. It took two years in a re, for the resort we stayed in to reopen. But um, it took me several months to decide how I could give back in a special kind of way. So I said, I decided as an educator, if I, if I adopt one daycare center, if I adopt, just me, just little, little old me, adopt one daycare center and maybe purchase some things and send it over to them, maybe once a month or something like that, then that would help that daycare provider. It would encourage all the little children who come through the center for years. It would support the family and strengthen the community. I'm a doctor daycare center. And so the young lady you see from, um, where is she from? Where is she from? You, you named it, Anastasia, New Orleans. She actually lived on the island at that time. She's a dentist. So she actually found me the first daycare center that we worked on, which is called Ursula's Child Care. And so we worked on Ursula's Child Care. She sent me video footage. She did a lot of things and we adopted Ursula's Child Care. It was a very beautiful experience. Merle, the uh, owner of the center, was was is absolutely amazing we still stay in contact with each other we send her money for christmas presents because it would just cost too much to ship presents there and it would take away from the whole uh it will it will drop the decrease the amount of money that's available so we send her the money so she can buy things on the island that the children can get really nice christmas presents from our organization and, and you still have it listed on your site ursula's that's a, yeah yes because she is absolutely amazing she sends me happy mother's day uh wishes and and merry christmas and just things she she calls and checks on me periodically she's just beautiful and we do the same and then um when we went back before covid she sent me she 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 unveiled this sign that says this center is adopted by nutriment so 
that's that's a wonderful story. And it just um, made me cry. It just made me cry because I, I really could see that she really appreciated what we did. That's a legacy. That's yeah. that's that's legacy and leaving a footprint that's beautiful. beyond um a sign, the fact that you've able to touch so many and continue. That that's phenomenal. So before you go, um, because you're, you're touched in this community as well. And thank you for that story. That's amazing. And you can read all about that on her website, which is, is listed, um, nmconnects.org. And you can read about your story and why you started uh, your nonprofit. But I do want to talk about the event that you have coming up on the 25th. Okay. Um, it is the, the Black Wall Street of Baltimore Business Walk. Um, tell us about that. Tell us about the location and how people can register. You can go to your site and all the information is there, but tell us about yeah. it. So, um, in, so all of this just comes together, right? All of this just comes together. So as part of the nonprofit organization, as part of the nonprofit organization in introducing the children to businesses and business management and just the whole concept of overcoming hurdles and things like that in business we wanted to do different fundraisers but also enlighten the community about the greatness of of our youth just because they're 18 to 21 does not make them lazy it does not make them uh dropouts or or anything like that and our students are 18 to 21 but we have a young man that's in that just graduated from high school he's 20 years old with four children but we also have a sponsor who's, when he finishes his driving school, who's going to pay for him to get a CDL and hire him as a truck driver. He's going to put him with his one of um, one of his other drivers, and he's hiring him as a CDL driver. So we're doing really great things in the community. We also do these little things called the grill out where we stat we uh, cook out on the front and we serve lunches. So. Um, with that, we decided to do this thing called uh, the Charles Village Business Wall. Now, with the Charles Village Business Wall, we set out tents and tables. The tables set out. But then we decided we were going to invite other people. So, so then we decided that, okay, well, who are we inviting? We're inviting everybody. But because it was called the Charles Village Business Wall, only businesses in Charles Village, only, people thought that only businesses in Charles Village were invited, but they weren't. It was for everybody. So we only had a few participants. And more people came out. It was still the Charles Village Business Wall, but more people came out as we promoted it, but only black owned businesses came out. Now that's not saying that nobody else is welcome. It's just that only black owned businesses registered. So we said, okay, fine then. We calling ourselves the Black Wall Street of Baltimore Business Wall, cause that's what it's about. It's highlighting black owned businesses. So we have quite a few businesses coming out now. The first time we had about 12, Second time we had about 30. Now we have over 60 businesses. You and are amazing. So, and that's September 25th, right? Next, that is next Saturday, yes. Man, yes. get your tickets, get on the website. Yes, and, and what happens is you get a sign like, like this with your registration number on it. And these are, these are the people that have already registered and uh, uh these are all wow. the businesses that have already registered and just i'm so ex i'm so excited i'm just we are, i'm gonna be there and i'm so excited hopefully i'm in town but i'm so excited about you um you being a counselor i see the passion in you we, we need people like you in our schools and and your business is just so great if you are a black business and you're looking to lease contact jackie um, is your contact information on, on your organization's page? Please contact her because, it, I mean, she's working with the youth. You're, I mean, you're, you're just amazing. You are amazing. And that's what the show wants to highlight. We don't just talk about the Baltimore City corruption. We also highlight great Black women that are doing great Black things that are good. I mean, it's just so good. Thank you. My soul is...
soul is warm. <laughs> Thank you. And I wanted to answer your question as well, because yes, I do. I talk to our youth, I talk to my students in school about black business, about entrepreneurship. I break it down step by step. Yes, I bought this building for 30,000. I flipped it for 210,000. I bought this building for 20,000. I did this, 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 and I, and I break it down step by step. I am an open book. If I die today or tomorrow, what's that? What good is having this information in my head going to do? I want to share and be a blessing to as many people as possible. If you ask me a question, I'm going to do my best to answer. And I don't know everything, but I'm going to give you what I got. Love it. it. Love yeah. it. Well, if you need to ship, uh, we're over there because we do ship international. All right. Awesome. Yeah. If you want to ship to your to your to your school that you're sponsoring, um, I'll make sure you have Nicole's email address. Uh, we we'll emailed you all the links, and she does have a shipping company, so you guys can definitely coordinate that offline. So that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome, we were going to do to Haiti this year, but then everything happened in Haiti. Well, yeah, we were supposed to go to Haiti this year. Oh wow. I definitely you guys need to link up um mm -hmm. so i'll make sure that information is shared uh we'll email you all that um so thank wow. you if you didn't have anything else you wanted to add nicole you can close up because we're going to bring on Ke i'm going to bring kelly on bigelow on because only because i'm she's back there cheering she's like and i just want her to be on the screen at the same time with Kathy, <laughs> this is another connection i want to Let's make see that connection got better that's all weird yeah, yeah. I, I want to make this connection because it's important um that we connect these women because they're both mm -hmm. phenomenal so you're on yeah. now kelly <laughs> hi kelly hello first of all I put my contacts in because I didn't want to burn nobody with my my thick my my thick glasses. You got my contact rolling around, so I'm up in here going. Oh. So thank you for that. Um, you all are amazing. No, I'm literally up. That is a great conversation. So look at what you done done. So yeah, look, yeah, yeah. So, um, it's beautiful. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes. We're going to get into your discussion, but I did want you and Jackie to connect. Um, and I will share both contact information for you guys because I, I, you know, I know what I know what Kelly is doing, and I know what you're doing, and I do. I want to start a black woman's business um, type of connection, oh. and uh, oh. a lot of the guests that we have on here do need to connect. You guys are doing some great things. So. Awesome. Yes. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, because I think that, again, back to the ownership piece, um, it, it, it's, it can be so understated um, for us. You know, mm -hmm. people push, and when I was looking at the actual statistics of um, not just business, but of us owning in Baltimore City, it's like a rental town. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's okay to rent. But no, I really, it's no, it's not. I mean, if that's what you have to do to start your business, but you need to have ownership at the end, or at least in some portion of your goal, it's okay to rent. We yeah, all have to start rent. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know and I, I tell them, I tell them, I said, you cannot leave until you're buying. Thank but you. But the process of buying is so challenging. I'm mm -hmm. When you have to come up with sixty thousand dollars to buy a, a a building, who has that kind of money just sitting on the side? And so then that's, that's why a lot of people can't buy. People. Exactly. exactly. Well, see well, that that goes back to you. You have to start from somewhere. That's understandable. Like in your business, and then you grow from there. But a lot of us have to get out of the mindset as well that we need to go into something that's 100% fixed up. Don't be afraid to put that sweat equity in. Um, don't right. be afraid to go into those neighborhoods that people say, oh, nobody wants to buy over there. Go look at those plans because within 10 years, somebody gonna be buying over there because I know that area where you at, now they aren't crying about ordinances and making too much noise because the neighborhood didn't changed a little bit behind it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. It changes. Why? We just need to be ahead of the game and be informed. 
what, you, know, you know what I've what I've learned? We mm-hmm. are ahead of the game. We are informed, but we don't know it. If you run a household, you're running a business. Call Absolutely, Kelly. <laughs> schedule it. Resources. You're managing budgets because you gotta feed people. You're managing schedules because somebody gotta get to school, somebody gotta get to work. Some people got to get to multiple uh, jobs. Some people got to go to multiple schools. And 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 resources. A hey, mind, look, Shaniqua got to get picked up. Um, I'm running late. You are a coordinator. You are crashing schedules. Secretary. Hello. So we are running a business and we don't know it. That's the first thing. And I know this is going to sound real rudimentary, but when they took home economics out of school, yes, it, look, it taught you how to budget, how yep. to schedule, resource management, and you did it through making oatmeal cookies, balancing a budget, how to write a check. Now, the times have changed. But those practices are the same. The dumbing down of our kids is on purpose. And I I hear you on a rental, but you got a house. That's your first office. You need to learn the tax codes. You better get that little side bedroom or that walk-in closet, create uh, an office, and then tax deductions. But that's not taught in school anymore. I remember Future Business Leaders of America. Those are the things you learn. I couldn't graduate high school without higher math, whether I was good at it or not. So the dumbing down is for a reason, because the game has changed about resources. We are fighting over resources. Resources is land, water, energy. And we are behind the game because we're in crisis mode all the time, getting from one crisis to the other. And speaking of crisis, hold on, hold on, Kelly, because nobody. She hit this with too much. Firecracker, firecracker, boom, boom, boom. She's ready to drop the bomb. Jackie, I know you were running to get here. I know, Jackie, um, you've spoken about your organization. Thank you for being here. We're going to get into some um, politics. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm gonna try to come out. I'm Kelly is out. ready. That Kelly is definitely Look, ready. Let, let me show y'all something real quick. <laughs> if you want to stay on, you're welcome. We're gonna get into to Kelly's topics. Okay. Um, and I I'm carry this bag everywhere I go. Everything you love about America. I need one of those. I need. Yes. I need a whole t-shirt. <laughs> everywhere. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Check her out. And look, and if I can get it before next week, I'm aware. Who's that on your shirt? That's Michelle. That's Michelle. Michelle oh, this is. So I wore this uh, during the last election. This is is Obama 2020. I still rock this. That's right. Make them mad everywhere I go. Kelly's about to give it to us, as you all can see. <laughs> So, um, Jackie, thanks again. I'm going to see you tomorrow, Jackie. Um, yeah, yeah. We're going to meet up tomorrow. And then, um, again, we got to get us all together collectively. But again, you're welcome to stay on and comment. Kelly's going to be talking about, she's also an entrepreneur. We're going to have her on another show, like I said earlier, to talk about her path in entrepreneurship and what she's doing with government contracting on the federal sector, which I talk about all the time. is better than the city. Go to the feds. Uh, she's going to talk about her her whole story there. But yeah, okay. But right now, we are going to talk about um, your community. You are a community activist. And and um, we're going to get Where? into that. The meeting Where? with Kwasi and Fume last week. And I guess the meeting yes. you may have just gotten off of today. So so let's get into it. Kelly, tell us who you are. Uh, my maiden name is Wilson. My ex-married name is Bigelow. But my family has been on the west side of Baltimore for over 100 years. My family helped desegregate Baltimore. Harold Dobson, Vernon Dobson, Spencer Dobson, Spencer Dobson the first, Tamara Dobson, the um, actress, 
Harold Dobson. We got economic degrees. We got preachers, teachers, you know, an occasional crackhead. Tip, typical black family. Hey. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I I grew up in the city. Um, when my parents um, separated, we moved into the city. We went from Baltimore County to Bentlow Street. And my both sides of my grandparents lived within walking distance on Bentlow. My maternal grandmother was on Bentlow and my paternal grandmother was at the top across the street from Mon Dorman. All the Dobsons are west side. I had great granddaddy around the corner. I had Harold and them up the street. My grandmother's, I mean, you could walk to each other's um, um, houses. Our church. Community. Our, talk about community, yes. Well, you used to live in the city, stay in the city, make your money in the city, and buy properties across the street and rent them out. That's what we did. Um, so my mother wanted to go back to school. We moved in with me, Ma and Pop. My grandmother was a special ed teacher at Carver. My mother is an, is a tested genius. That woman named No. No. Yeah. Her and my dad used to go to Pimlico to get our mortgage and she used to handicap horses. So, yeah. Wait, yeah, did you say, yeah. did you say Hustle your connection cut out. Did you say your mom and dad used to go to Pimlico to get your mortgage? To make mortgage. Yeah. Make more <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> make mortgage. No, okay. but she used to handicap horses on an abacus. Right. So my hustle is real. Is, is the educational side and, and one foot in the street. And I watched my mother work two jobs with two little girls, full time at um, Amtrak, finish her degree at Coppin, got a promotion, went back to school, got another promotion, and ended up working two full time jobs. Sent us both to school. Now, wow. Now, wait a minute, though, wait a minute. I did not finish my degree. I came home, wanted to go to the club, saw this man, fell in front of him, became my boyfriend, and then became my husband. I was in my third year, UMES. I don't even know if she doesn't forgive me for that yet. But what that taught me was I need to eyeball a career that was going to allow me to do more than just survive. So I waited tables. I ended up getting, you know, a job with back then it was Nations Bank. I became a um, admin and I was pretty good at mail merge. We're talking about Microsoft 3.1 girl way back. I'm dating myself. From there, I had a female vice president. Nations Bank ended up moving their headquarters to North Carolina. I couldn't go. So she paid for all this training for me. I finagled my way into a contract on the migration for the national contract for SSA to upgrade from Windows 3.1 to 95. I had always been good with running my mouth and I'm smart. So I got in there and I was like, well, I, I read pretty well. I'm gonna do this. And from there, I just kept going. I worked for Comp USA. I, and then I was like, well, wait a minute. I'm really good with this computer stuff. So I got into networking. Once I got into networking, I got into end user application support. So I've done everything from teach applications to building a network. I got tired of help desk and, and uh all of that stuff. So then I said, well, I want to do a little more. And I see what the boys are doing. I want to be an engineer. So I got my M my MCSE. I got my Security Plus, my VMware, my ITI. Uh, blah, blah, blah. 
domino um, engineer for 10 years. And I contract because back then, contracts were stable. They weren't just one and two year options. And you could make some money. I was like, all right, I can do this. And I'm doing this. And I have tried my hand at a lot of things. But this stuck because it provided stability for me and my son once I, I separated and got divorced. And what I've always found is no matter no matter where you go, there you are. There's inequities everywhere. But I always lived in the city. I like money. I like what money can do for me. And my money went farther for me living in the city. I didn't own a home. I had a home given to me by my grandparents. It was paid for. I leveraged that home. Took out a loan against it. Started a company. Had a company for about five years. Had some stuff happen. Lost the home. I, instead of hiring somebody, I looked up how to recreate my own title. I found, I used local um, uh, law services. And I was like, I'm pretty good for fending for myself. And my friends would ask me, uh-uh, don't you do that. Don't you spend no money. Go to this person. Go to that person. And then because my um, Uncle Vernon who helped desegregate Baltimore and started the Goom Squad and show me, Kelly, call this person. Uh, uh, Tuffy, tell Kelly to call this person. Tell him, tell my sister, blah, blah, blah. So I, I had some, some weight where a lot of people don't necessarily have that pathway. I mean, I grew up in the church. I mean, in the church. I mean, dancing. I, I was an artsy-fartsy kid. That's what I did. But I had direction and a pathway. And it is so hard to navigate Baltimore um, politically. And I kept on finding myself, oh, what you're not going to do is, that was always my premise. No, you, you're not going to discount me because of this, because that water bill is, is, is wrong. No, you better pay me my money, you know. And my first time <laughs> on, on uh, a broadcast, was when Glenn De Governor Glenn Denning had just lost the election and the 10 year moratorium against the utility bills going up had been lifted. That is when BG&E was able to hike utility rates by three times. Why does this look like a car payment? Oh, hell no. So I took myself down to the, the, the uh, William Schaefer building on the corner of um, Baltimore and Light, and they had a camera out there. I actually left my job on lunch and went down there. And my boss called me, he said, are you on the news? I said, I am on lunch. That's what I am. I'm on lunch. And he was like, OK, you going to be back? When I, Look, I don't mess up no jobs, right? So they had me on TV and they were like, uh, would you be interested in writing an op-ed? I said, yeah, but if it's not, if you're not going to do anything about it, you know. And then a lady said to me, she's like, no, you need to be heard. And I was like, okay, I, look, this, this thing right here, it's something mean. And that's, look, I turned 53 last week and this at 28 pistol and I, i've learned a little more refinement but my passion is still there because racism is real sexism is real misogyny is real and when you grow up with people that you see fighting for other people it's in your DNA because that's what you see. I mean, we used to sit around my grandfather's table and I'm listening to them how, how they're organizing picketing and marching and they passing palm bars and chillers. Oh, are you going to call Dr. So-and-so and blah, -so and blah, blah, blah. That's how, that's how the doctors get down. They don't play. And, and they infiltrated all through Baltimore. Health department, 
Harold, who we just lost, um, had a degree in economics from uh, Howard, but was also a Baba Law. I, I mean, they, they kept it moving. But the root of all of that has always been spirituality slash religion, and they were different kind of creatures. Uh, Uncle Harold, Uncle um, Vernon, and Granddaddy had degrees from Harvard, Howard, Morgan, brrr. but they weren't driving Cadillac and Mercedes and they own their homes. They put their kids through college and they lived a good life, but they did not profit off of their spirituality. So I can't get people with people like Jamal Bryan. Yes. That pimp. We yeah, can't I can't. Can't. I, I'm just agreeing. I'm just... <laughs> But he's not alone. Walbrook. I remember he's, he, when he's he, not alone. I, no, I remember when he worked at Merry Go Round at Mondarm and selling weed. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, look around. I said it. I was there buying my prom dress, 1986. Wow. So, yeah. So last week we were talking. We do talk about the fail, failed leadership and yeah, how, religion, yeah. how how the the, 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 the the church played a large role in us segregating both. Look. All those, civil, all those civil rights, um, um, what people don't know about the civil rights movement was how tactical it was. Yeah. They, purposely, they purposely used college kids. You want to know why? Because your mom couldn't afford to lose her job. So they leveraged the elders and utilized, look, you, you can take a punch, we get a knock in, we get you out of jail. And Practicing nonviolent tactics happen in the basements of churches. Right. But but let's let's let's, let's talk about Baltimore today though. Let's yes. let's get so, here today. Because I, what I do when I look up Kelly, I see uh Dear Mr. Mayor on Facebook. I see um in neighborhood, no, they're not having a meeting and trying to hold us out. So let's talk about number one, let's talk about what's going on in your community. Um, and let's talk about, well, we'll start with the meeting with and quasi, quasi. First community. of all, what's, what's the community? So I can know where we I are. live in uh, Liberty Square of the Greater Mondawmin community. I live on Tioga Parkway between okay. Liberty Heights okay. and Rice's Town by choice. Right. We so we've got a lot of lot of vocal. There's a lot going on there. With the, with, with, we were talking last week about the bike trail, and then not want to knock all the trees down. And we're gonna get into that. But right now, um, let's talk about the meeting with Quasi and Puma because we've been on the show, and we were like, Quasi, where are you? It's like, where's Waldo? We ain't heard from him. We ain't seen him. Nothing's going on. You guys sure. tracked him down and had a meeting with him last week to talk about the six hundred million dollars coming to the city. Um, so we, we he he exists. Um, and what, so did, me, what came out of that meeting? This. Let me say this. Kwaisi has not been absent. Kwaisi has always, my, my uncle Vernon was his mentor. He used to come to our church. Kwaisi is quiet and works in the background and he's lethal. His sole job is to get this city money, period, as a congressperson. Because of his heritage, lineage, um, relationship with, with the dearly departed Mr. Cummings, he has a long legacy. When Cummings was vocal, Cummings, Cummings was vocal, was vocal. Cummings was effective. It has never been quite easy. That's just not who he is as a person. Now, that doesn't mean that that's not needed. But if you're looking for him to be that, that rah, rah, that's not him. It's never going to be him. And I don't think in this day and age in politics that necessarily plays to his strength. But what community cohesiveness and, and when people say we need to stick together, no, it's people like me that need to do this because that, that's, that's not him. So what, what came out of the meeting? The meeting was about the six hundred um, million. So one of the elders that has been on the forefront 
um, Miss Mary Hughes. Woo! Who we tried to get on here today, but yeah, <laughs> the, it, it, she sends her her apologies. She's she she's like a graceful debutante, but she lethal. Ooh. And she has the relationship with them. She's like, look, crazy. $640 million has already come into the city and this immature child in office has already has had this money that has very little oversight. With the $670 million that's coming by way of the infrastructure build back better, um, we need to know what can we do to keep this money from being misused, open, well, stolen, and Obviously. and benefiting a fur coat. I always say someone buys a fur coat. That's my tagline. Ending up on someone's back because we know we love fur coats. Um, Y'all not going to cope with Sheila. <laughs> I love my furs. I'm not listening to her. I love my furs. I did. Really? Sheila bought a, I didn't know that. I'm always saying there's always a fur I coat. didn't know, I didn't know that. I, 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 I love, I love furs too. I wish Peter would come for me. They oh, I didn't, me. Well, I didn't need So let me use. So there's always something. When okay. it's cold. Right. So, it's just, so, so what, what, what did he what say? Is, what What's is going point? on is that the idea that Baltimore is broke is a false narrative. Baltimore ain't never been broke. They keep on stealing. You can't steal something that ain't there. That's the first thing. Mucha. Two. Two. Why do we not know that we got awarded this kind of money? Baltimore has never reached a million people in population. Never. We are a small city, but we're a port city. Baltimore had a very wealthy black middle class before Marion Barry built up DC. We were a port city. We had major headquarters here. And I'm talking about outside of SSA, outside of, of um, making your way through federal and state government. And in the 80s, when we lost all of those companies, Lucent, Black and Decker, um, uh, uh, Parker and Gamble, McCormick, we were the number two steel producing city in the world. That's gone. GM plant, which is now Amazon. So my friends and family had to come up. It was a middle class, but when uh, crack and AIDS hit in the late 80s and 90s, you had not only black flight, but you had extermination. So you, we went from, what, 800,000 people down to 700,000 people over 15 years. And in the last 10, eight to 10 years, we've lost 66,000 black folk out of a predominantly black city. It is by design. And the first part is that you do divestment. Marshall's, Marshall's it's, gone. It's all across West Baltimore. So what did Kwasi say his so, name for me? So what did he Kwasi, say? Kwasi. Kwasi. Um, yeah, Yoruba. Kwasi and Fume. And what he did, he skillfully walked us through what we need to be doing. Here's the money. Here's what I got for you all. He got a $670 million for the city. He got Maryland State $3.8 billion dollars at the discretion of Hogan and at the discretion of the mayor. And the reason they walking around with their chest pumped out is because there's very little oversight built in because the idea is get this money to the people. Quasi walked us through. This is what I got you all. Here's the information in a wonderful um, presentation that I'm going to send to you all. Yeah, and we are going to have Donnie publish that. And and if you don't make it hot enough for them where they cannot ignore you, then they're going to continue to do that. And what I like is that as much as I love Kwaisi, Mary Hughes held his, his in the most graceful way. It was like a debutante. Well, we hear that, Congressman, uh, 
Honorable uh, Kwaisi and Fume, but how can we leverage you? Ooh, child. Yeah, like that, 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 she must be, I mean, her and Linda Batts, they, they're so eloquent and they use, and they just, yeah, they, they know how to get it. Yeah. So, they're, they're so, so, so doing like this, pop, 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 pop. And, and, so what's the and, plan with the money? Like, what do communities need to do? Where's the money supposed to go? Um, so what what the can we do? The sure? money is at the discretion of the mayor. Now, the yes. seven, the six hundred and seventy million. Part of that twenty million dollars is for shutter businesses. I said. What the hell is the shutter business? What twenty million dollars of that money is for shutter businesses. We're not talking about ready. we're talking about the recovery money. We're not talking about the um of infrastructure. No, we're talking no. about the build back better. Okay. The infrastructure bill. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Twenty million dollars of that is for shutter business. I'm like, what is shutter That's business? Downtown. That's the downtown properties, though. You better speak that language. It's for it's ghost entertainment town. venues that had to close, had problems reopening, or closed and haven't reopened. So if you have an art gallery or, you know, um, or like the Hippodrome and Keystone Corner. Or if you're a small Black artist that has an art gallery, you're also entitled to that $20 million. So we need to let our Black artist community know. So there you go. That. Um, there, uh, and, and I don't have all the figures, but I will get that information to you. Matter of fact, um, Ms. Hughes is supposed to get it to um, the attendance um this evening actually okay um, well they go ahead they call themselves releasing a, um a tracker i know uh councilman or well he's not city council president nick mosby he uh, basically stated that they released some type of tracker i don't know if it's the but, same but the tracker is spending so we need to know where right. the money's supposed to be allocated to so we can get mm -hmm. on them to make sure it's so, correct. well shouldn't they release that plan i mean well, well, i would think well, well, wait a minute, hold up. So we're okay. going to be with quite easy. Okay. Quite easy said, and, and Mary said, well, if this money has been released with the CARES Act and this money was awarded two months ago, why haven't we heard about it? Quite easy said, I'm going to make sure he reaches out to you. So, he walked us through the plan. He walked us through this pocket of money is for this, this pocket of money for that. Here's who you can reach out to. I'm making my, he stayed on there with us for two hours. But these fools can't make 30 minutes for us? Two hours during a voting um, uh, process. He was there during the night. He's like, if I got to leave. I said, no, I get it. I understand. I, I, used, I used to proctor those meetings. So I get it. And so he walked us through what the process is, and he was very clear. And he's like, "Look, I, as a congressman, as a federal elected congressman, they don't have that kind of influence separation, right? But the influence from the relationships are there." And she was like, "If we're not getting what we need, no matter what we tell these people, quite you see, what should we do?" And he was like, "I don't know." What's wrong with these folks? He's like, I can inquire, I can use my leverage. But to be honest, as a federal elected official, when you're dealing with municipalities, you can't you cannot do that. So, so, so gave all that money, money. You're, you're getting information from Kwaise. Um, the city has had the money and the tracker. So I think the tracker just stating that in the brief uh Thing he did the other day, Brandon did. I didn't see. Uh, Linda sent it to me, and I didn't want to get frustrated because he's probably talking in circles. But on um, the thing is, the tracker is again spent money. So have, 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 you, heard, have you heard of uh, One Day to Baltimore? No. One Day to Baltimore is a nonprofit organization that provides a public one-stop shop of public information on spending how many black women businesses have been opened up in the last 24, 40 years? Oh, 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 oh. Who, 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 where is this at and who, what? One day to Baltimore. One, one day to Baltimore. It's open data. Hold on. I'm getting ready to give it to you. Hold on. 
Also, oh, how many businesses have been open? But it doesn't track how many businesses, like let's say if they had a ball. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, there, there's is granular. They, no, there's is, granular data. Is that certified? The ones that are certified with the city, or just that they know of? Because no, you see the checkbook. What contractors have been paid? What for which projects? And your average Baltimorean doesn't know about this. I just posted the link for you. And what technology has allowed me to do is, and, and we'll get into the business of what I do another time, but I think I have found my niche of leveraging technology for community action. It's open okay. Baltimore. I've seen open that before. Baltimore. Okay. Sorry, when you I'm said sorry. one date, I was like, what's open open Baltimore. 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 Yeah. It used to be called that. We, um, mm -hmm. Years ago, I built the original 311 uh, database server and uploaded all that data back in the late 90s. And it used to be called um, uh, One Data Baltimore. So this is a running tally of, of everything that they are supposed to let you know, but it is out of ordinance. It's not showing everything. Um, why are we not tracking public engagement? that by law, any contract or project has to do. So if it's required by law, why is it not being tracked? Why don't well, we're I not tracking, you know, I, We're not tracking the use of minority businesses. I ran that office. They don't have any software or data on that. That's why I was like, one well, Baltimore, I know that whatever you were talking about could not yeah. have all this data because they don't want us to see it because we don't No, have But don't then have. you have people like me who have done contracts with the city um have have a little bit of uh relationships and i was like I, I built my own um platform within slack and the next goal is to to have a leverage their custom api to pull that data into slack and just invite linda in and say this is what's going on but and the problem with the city is they don't give us all the data so we no, that is the here, problem. But as long as we're dependent on them we're never going to get everything well here's the here, here's the issue if you don't know what's there you can't see what's missing. The most important data right now is meetings. And what Brandon has done, and, and this, this is a nugget that Kwaisi gave us. When you remain in a certain status of the pandemic, you get to suspend certain things by law. So if you don't have to have public comment on city efforts, this is what's going on. So he's like, light his ass up, basically. I was like, oh, and Linda, Linda was like, that's you. I'm like, that's me all day long. And well, so we're in stage what? So this this COVID state that we're in, it does allow for the city to have less public input and get away with a lot more. So we you probably will always crisis. see us in a stricter state than the rest of the state. Um, and, and, you know, Dr. So when Durazo everybody's like, yay, Brandon, he's not caving. Like yeah, he protecting doctors. us. Ooh, he got Ooh, a shot. Yeah, no. Yeah. No, no, I was like, oh, oh, wait, I get it at first. But you're suspending public no comment on projects, and we got awarded $640 million from the cancer. That Negro, please. Well, my thing is, is where the money, the projects that they're putting it into, because when you look at the disinvestment that has occurred in areas like Shipley Hill, Carrollton Park, Harlem Park, my, well, I'm getting there. And then when you hear about uh, the tax decrease that Target got after they fled, and I'm going to use the word fled from Mondawmin, it's, it's it's a slap in the face. At least give me 10%. They gave them 40. <laughs> you know. All I asked was look, all I asked was some KY. That's all I'm saying. I mean, you're gonna do that. Give me a little lubrication. Shit. Cause it's it's bad. All right, it's, it's all right. Bad. <laughs> Let okay. So, I'm sorry. But but, but okay, so quite you say, so quite you say uh get, had the briefing. We're gonna get some slides that'll break some things down. Um, but 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 we, what, what we want to take from this is that the city, you know, our our viewers, our constituents, the constituents must demand 
um, that the money is spent appropriately in the in the areas. Otherwise, the city is going to spend with their friends, their contractors, who's going to hire them when they're not in office and all the bullshit so, so that what, they always what, do. What What is at the crux of this? And I said this in the meeting. As a person who has contracted, mostly in D.C., for most of my career, making that commute, White folk can't afford to live in D.C. no more. And Baltimore, with its beautiful architecture, its expansive houses, is unappetizing to them because it's Negro City still here. And they have allowed crime to fester, divestment, pestilence, because outside of the AIDS epidemic, and outside of us having COVID, we still were number two with syphilis. I'm like, dude, heroin. We were number two in the world in heroin sales in the 90s. We only got 750,000 people in the city. So all of that and, and the divestment money-wise, businesses leaving, they did this to bleed the city of Black folk. Now we have not left at the rate that they want us to because we can afford to go nowhere. So they hiked up utilities. We have the highest utility taxes. rates. Taxes. Property taxes. Water. We used to get water. Yes. Crime. All of this is by design. And, and wait a minute. And the backpack bandits. Don't forget the backpack bandits that have been let. They come from all these other counties that are creating havoc. Havoc. They are coming into the black neighborhoods, raking, reeking. Havoc. But wait, there's more. <laughs> when I was talking to Kwaisi and, and we were having this conversation, he assured that he would reach out to the mayor. Look, you need to look, it is to your benefit. These folks is mad. And Brandon doesn't know his audience. Brandon doesn't know that everybody in Baltimore ain't ignorant on the corners. And then some brothers and sisters on the corner that got that run circles around him, but they, they got a problem. You know, and I said, I said, I have a problem with the discounting of folks that cannot fend for themselves because they look, Shamika and her four kids, she worried about her getting to her medical billing job and then working at Mondaman or Amazon. Amazon or driving for Uber to make ends meet. You put us in food deserts, and then what's here is not only um, unhealthy, but it's hands up. ShopRite is a piece of crap. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. Now, the they do the Baltimore it's Development high. Corporation. They, I think, oh, it's like a delay. I'm sorry. Um, there is like uh, funding available for to bring grocery stores, right? So I guess my question is, is that since that funding is available, why not put this back into the hands of the communities? Because I drive through a lot I of different places. Is food, though, because check it out, crisis management. If you got us fighting the water department over here, do I have time to apply for? But you, you know, them white folk in 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 Reservoir Hill with their farmers markets. You, you you know what I'm saying? It's infiltration. Look, I'm black AF. I'm not anti anything, but I'm black AF. I'm black AF because I live in a predominantly black city. Not everybody has that experience or that or, or, or that existence. So it it. I look to my left, they black. I look to my right, they black. I go to church, they black. I go to my job, they black. Miss Mabel and them been with me. Yeah, like but Kelly, but Kelly, there's a lot of black people that live in this city that aren't black AF, okay? Uh, they act like it. They get an afro. They become mayor. They put on glasses to try to look like you know who. They talk about Wu-Tang Clan, and they not black as AF. I'm sorry. 
So let's let's be real. It's not just because you're around black people, because there's a lot of black people in this city who aren't doing what they're supposed to do. They don't care about anybody but themselves. So so let's 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 break that down. The reason you are who you are is that's just who you are, and that's your character. And there's a sheer lack of character and integrity in Baltimore City and in Baltimore City Hall and some of these fake community activists that I always talk about and these pastors and these people running for office who say this and they get in and that. And so, you know, and, and a dear friend of mine who happens to be a politician kind of got on me that I always I can't just group everybody together and every politician and a liar. But yes, the F a lot of them are so. But I, I will say everyone isn't. But I, I only know of one that hasn't lied to me yet. So aside, that's just who you are. And so well, we, have a, well, we have a problem. I, I do not disagree with you. She up here. But I'll say this. I'm not looking to make money off my folks. I make a good living. I've done it for myself. Someone asked me years ago and somebody asked me tonight, why are you not in politics? I cuss too much. You piss me off, you everything, but we you gonna catch it. What's wrong with cursing and being a politician? I mean, we had because Donald there, Trump. No, no, no. One thing we know as professional women, one thing we know, you unfortunately have to play the game until you create a game for yourself. We do no, know that. you don't know you got to be yourself. That's the problem. No. She can't go, she can't, she can't go to, to the Senate, cussing. No, 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 no. There's a way to do it. No, don't get me, don't get me wrong. I can cut you out with four syllable words. I can tell you how recal recalcitrant you are and the, 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 the hyper, you know, your hyperbolic response. I got that. What I am saying is I do well supporting others. I come from service because that's what I saw. And if you recall. That's how I started my conversation. When service was taken out of the DNA, the DNA of Baltimore, it's Sheila Dixon. Oh, I can make money off of this. She actually was a really good administrator, but her personal life was jacked up. Not I'm old school. Look, if you can't handle your personal life, you can't handle my purse. I, I grew up with Stephanie. Stephanie and I went to Arena Players together. I was a dance major. She was a, a, a drama major. Stephanie subscribed to that talented 10th Jack and Jill crap. And they wanted to bring, rather than spend the money to really fix systemic racism, drug drug use, and crime, they wanted to bust in everybody. So that makes us the value. If you buy a house, you don't have to pay, you know, for 10 years taxes. And Well, if Targeting them don't have to pay taxes. And you buy a house and you're a landlord and you're not from Baltimore and you get a tax reprieve. Where's your tax base coming from? I was so angry with her. And then, don't get me started on Jaja Banks. I mean, Carol uh, Q. Don't get me started on her. You dummy. <laughs> you dummy. You can't no. do. Look, we need you can't to not do what they do, right? We never now, Catherine was good though. Catherine was doing okay for the city a no, little bit. No, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. No. Look, I'm like, head, Nicole. No, she wasn't. Hang that head. No, she wasn't. Jaja Binks was over there lusting at the girl. Wait, what are you calling her? Jaja Jaja Binks. Binks. But I thought she Look. I thought she was helping with the contracts, no? No. Well, for, yeah, what in my pocket, in my pocket with that. University of Maryland. Look, let me tell you something. When you get in bed with these groups and anybody who understands the the documentary that I've watched, terminate the groups. When you get in bed with these people, when you do what they do, you don't get a slap on the wrist. They slit your freaking throat. But so they bring you in so you can be the fall person. I mean, we know that. That's, why, that's the only reason no. you're there, because they really don't want to do business with you. They think you smell. No, you know, they want to utilize you. They want to utilize you because they can't talk to us. Yeah. So they need a mouthpiece for us. That's that, why we have that. an Afro running the city now, because he's the mouth. he was supposed to be the mouthpiece for us, and then he stopped talking to us, and he stopped answering the phone calls, and he said, forget it. I'm going to just walk around. Well, let me say this. I was in favor of Brandon, because I like how he maneuvered himself. 
in city council. I, he, he handles himself. And considering the committee he came from, what he's doing now is an abomination. So what has happened is that power corrupts, period. And when you have people who are not in service of the people, and they look and say, wait a minute, I'm in charge of 640 million with 670 million coming. And, and can 10 million just disappear or 20 million? And, and let, let's not forget when I was telling Nicole, we're getting all this money, but the money that we have already, our direct tax money for the city that the city operates on, that's being that was already being fraudulently uh, mishandled. So now you're going to get all this extra money. So then they want us to forget about the, the everyday money, the operating budget and all that other stuff. So stuff is going to disappear. And that's that's just the bottom line. Wait, before I want to read really a comment that we're going to we're going to kind of just try to tail off and so and, so. And, and, but hold on a second. Um, Kelly, I want to read a comment. There's a bit of a delay. Sorry. I want to read this comment from um, Kay Murray that said, forget COVID. There are too many methods to utilize to get public feedback without risking infection. So miss me with the city can legally uh, do things with no com um, community feedback. Change those laws. Those CARES Act monies need to be disseminated in the Black community and awards need to be issued to those who've been disenfranchised for years. Of course, us. Why do I need to call? Who do I need to call at the federal level? Question mark. Sick of the crap that keeps robbing our communities. And I want it that that is really just basically what we always talk about on here. It's it's systematic. Senator Cardin, because he old white and he he about to croak. Call his office. Um, who said that name again? Senator Cardin. Cardin. Senator Van Hollen. His chief of staff's name is Nan Man. N -A -N -N -A -N. No, we can call these people. They're not going to do anything. No, 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 no. no. But well, yeah. they need Look. to call the Justice Department because it's corruption and it's fraud, and they people not, need to go not to jail. Not only that, but That's but, what needs but, to but, under, but understand this: you have to understand how to maneuver and understand the climate we're in. They can't win an election without us. So you have to make a noise from the top down. No, I, I, because remember, Maryland got awarded 3.8 million that can still be dispensed to Baltimore City. So when you report that oversight isn't happening, they're going to be like, well, wait a minute. No, Manchin is holding up crap talking about oversight. Do I need to go to him? You need to know how to leverage information. So we've got to get a group so of people happened? together to, to do our own tracker. And that's what's probably going to have to happen because I won't. Well, the city. the city has to report back to both the state and the federal government. And if they find an error, I know on the federal level, they can invoke what's called extrapolation. Um, and that that's can't happen until you use the money. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things right. that that um, Quisey was. He's like, we're like, why can't you? we have an audit? You can't audit money that hasn't been used so what we have to do is look sunlight is the best disinfectant you not look you not only call your your senators the justice department but your state senator most of us don't know who our state senators are like the one that left the quarterly meeting a few minutes ago before i got here but oh you, oh i missed that meeting because i was yeah, but I know who you're talking about. I yeah, they all recorded it if you want to see it. I recorded it because I'm like, oh, oh, oh my god, what's his name? Because I think I told you, that, is that Harris? Uh, uh, oh, you know, he did a meeting today. He did a yeah, uh, I just left it. That's where that's I a, no, it was another one with Coppin. Um, today, this oh, earlier he, he today, abruptly, he abruptly left like, like a little kid with a tantrum. Oh, anyway, look, I, so anyway, but you want you want to contact your senators your state senators, you also want to contact the press, but not the sun. Not the sun. <laughs> Look, let, let, let me tell you something. Not the Baltimore eclipse. That's what I call it. It ain't the sun. It's not shining. No light. Ooh, it is not the it read it. It's the, that's my name for it. It's the Baltimore eclipse. So, so look, 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 let, let me be real honest. Nick Mosby and Marilyn are in the pickle. They coming for their necks. In a real deal pickle. Hey, hey, 
Hey, Nick, if you don't cast your lot with us to make sure there is quarterly audits of the mayor and the use of that money, we're not supporting you and we're going to let them hang you and your wife because that's what they want. Yeah, I said it. If you're I'm not sorry. with us, then you're against us and we will go to Fox News. I'll play, uh, what's her name, Clasey? I'll put it with some red bottoms real quick. Classic, Kim. Yeah. No, they Mackenzie. Really? Mackenzie is the problem. Mackenzie Foster, like she be on it. She everywhere. Yeah, but 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 <laughs> if if you need me, you better work for me. You you want well, they're not working me. for us. They have no, but you can work. They say they're going to leverage. leverage. Look, hey, hey Nick, you, you know the investigation they got with you and your wife. You know, thirty minutes. I said it online. I was like, his office going to give us thirty minutes. I saw you dancing with your wife in a video. And so according to longer than 30 minutes. So is he refusing to meet with you or because I know it's like a process. They're dragging, or their, feet. They're dragging their feet. Um, Miss Hughes did hear from them and they were like, no disrespect. So what they do, they have a scheduling assistant on Zoom. So when you schedule with that soft ass James Torrance, I mean, um, our council person, James Torrance, um, they said he was like dynamic. Somebody was See, telling me SpongeBob Square Pants. But he don't have no spine. Yeah. They None. said listen. That's how they like, like them. That's how they like them. Oh. Okay, nice yeah. and but when, so when you when you ask for a meeting, it has 30 minute scheduling increments. If you do not ask, that's what you get. So Miss Mary was like, look, that's the wash your mind. 30 minutes, we can accomplish nothing. So you need to leverage the fact that Nick and Marilyn are in a pickle. You need to leverage that Torrance, <laughs> Brandon, and Nick got elected with less than 32% in this city. That's the shoot. I got 32% of my contacts. What you talking about? And if you don't work for us, we will actively campaign campaign against your black behinds. Well, do you think that he's going to? I don't think that Brandon is necessarily going to run again for mayor. Um, I don't. You think no, so? We believe he's going to try to go into Senate. So we he's just try, well, Senate. well, well. There are two avenues. Word on the street is there are two avenues he wants to take. The idea. First of all, him and Nick seem to be playing the good cop, bad cop crap. I don't yeah, know. just like it's true, though? Did, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. And if Brandon leaves, Nick ascends to the mayorship by law. Now, Brandon has got to secure money and support to run. Run for what? Senate. Yeah, it's not going to happen. It's, no, it's, no. Not, it's not going to happen. But you can't tell that little Afro that's not going to happen. I'm telling this Afro, and whoever's watching can go tell his Afro, and I'm going to speak Afro. Son. Son. <laughs> How do you speak Afro? <laughs> Son. This, 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 uh, no. What language? What language? I'm going to hold his afro to the high school. I'm going to hold his afro to the high school. I'm speaking afro. I'm speaking all that. If I don't do nothing else in my lifetime, now the Panamanian's coming out on me because the hand is rolling. And she he is not going to get elected, not even for the neighborhood association, uh, secretary or treasurer. It's not going to happen. I'm not, I'm, I'm disappointed. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Period. We have to be careful about eating our young though. And what I mean Excuse by that me? is, I said we have to be uh, careful about eating our young. You know, so, so no, he I'm, ate himself. Okay, no, 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 hear, no. Me out, hear me out. Hear me out. He's, what I am saying is that Brandon is not necessarily what we need, but the moment they get another O'Malley in there, we in trouble. We we in well then we're in trouble because Brandon is a black O'Malley and, and, and so he ain't even that good. Stop lying. He ain't even that good. He ain't okay. even that hey. good. Look, so he but does he? Do you think that he has the opportunity to turn it around? I mean, we're only yeah. we are but, we're not but even not willingly, not willingly, not willingly. 
Look, you guys, you guys, we can't keep making excuses for these politicians. I'm, no, we no. made a plan. We ain't got to make a plan. If he had any intention of doing what he was going to do, he would have done it from day one. We are in September, okay? He was, he was, he was, it's too late. I don't know that anything's going to turn around by the what, but the looks of things is going to be some bullshit. So, so let's oh, just not even waste now. our time talking about it. It's bullshit. Man, see, you got on me about cussing, and we didn't want the people. Oh, no, I'm not mad. I'm mad. Because I, do, I do, that's what I so, do. So, let me say this. Do I think, do I think it could be turned around? That's the eternal optimist in me, but not without holding his afro to the hot cone. No. Well, there it is, because the city is in uprising. Everywhere you go, people are oh, they, uprising. Let me tell you what folks need to do. They need to put their mask on, and wherever he is, trot your behind over there and make his butt uncomfortable. Well, I think he's going to be on this getting weekend. the coverage well, from the media that we can't get. Hold on. He's going to be, everybody got to go and register to be on this. Hold on. What is it uh, that he's going to be on? Uh, let's see. Citywide action registration September 18th. Uh, this is from one to three. Mayor Scott is the guest. Are you guys gonna be on that call? Say what? We don't know about it. Can you post the link? I'm gonna no. try. He's <laughs> not gonna let nobody make any comments. Listen, this is crazy. Bill. Bill, it's what, you let? what you mean let? They don't they don't allow comments in a lot of these things. They shut allow? down comments. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. You got no, let me tell you something. You got T-shirts. <laughs> you got bags. bags. You wear your politics. What you mean, let? Well, well, well if you call into I'll something, bring dial my, in I'll Zoom, bring my, Mr. my, my magic Mr. Microphone. I'll be out there with, with my girlfriend's uh, grandchild, Mr. Microphone, out there. Look, look, you go back. You go back to holding the signs. Be like. <laughs> Well, um, you, ladies, see, you see this paper. <laughs> so, so I, I think what it's going to take is going to take a mass voter registration drive to Absolutely. get more people out to vote, um, Absolutely. and more people and awareness. And they have to fear us. I really don't think I, I mean, I understand it, but, but there's so many of the voters that are uneducated enough that they just say, Oh, well, I like this person, or this person went to my school, you know, and so, so they, they so we have to just change that. So, so Tamara and, 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 and Nicole, and, and, and I will digress after this. You are asking a, an abused population that is over-salted, over-sugared, drug-induced, lead-paint-poisoned, historically. And the only thing that Baltimoreans have been able to do is see the next day in front of them. So until... We, we keep on, and, and this, this is something that Kwaisi said, and I had this conversation with the elders. They got us fighting bike trails, but they got us fighting trails and bikes, bike lanes. But what we need is a real funded drug program, a real funded, a year round youth into pay internship job program you got enough money to fund that for up to five years and then you got another 670 million coming so we are in crisis mode focusing on trying to keep gentrification from happening dealing with crime and drug abuse and we're in crisis management so we're trying to prevent this but we're not telling them what we want. What we want with that money, we want programs funded. We want high school schools to be one-stop centers where you can not only pick your kid up, but you got counseling. You have um, um, drug intervention. You can have spiritual and mental health in the school. So you ain't got to rush. You can have um, a basic physician assistant in there that you can do basic um, health care in the school you well, have, well the school ceo is is paid so I much money why are you coming up with that i can't stand her but she's getting paid to come i can't stand her 
she's getting paid to come up with these. <laughs> she's getting paid to come up with these things. Why yeah, are you come? I can't stick. Look, why are you at eight thirty-five p.m. on September fifteenth? Why are you Kelly Bigelow on Sister Biz? On, on Black USA. Some people and bring it out Why of you. are you coming up with ideas to what to do with the money? Why isn't the person getting paid? That's my thing. It's like we shouldn't have to do that. All these people in the city getting paid, the agency had the city. The city. abomination of you showing your entire behind to a marginalized population of making almost $300,000 a year. I can't stand it, woman. So she should be coming up with these she needs ideas. To meet, uh, she needs to meet a crown royal bag with nickels in it. But oh, it's not. But it's not her one. fault. It's not oh, her no, fault. No, 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 that, no, 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 no. Her her you want to know why it's her fault? Because she's at the top. Well, down. the education is her fault. But I'm saying that the part, the money that she's making, we need to go back to our leaders. Why are they paying them without some type of pay for like performance? I mean, if they're not, we need to go back to that. That makes no sense. I'm not locking into no contract. First of all, stop going to get police commissioners. And first of all, she's a CEO. You used to have, um, 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 what was Dr. Crew and, and uh, Dr. Yeah. Superintendents. Yeah. Superintendents. Superintendents. And when you go out, look, let me tell you something about, about project management and, and, and um, IT. That's, that, 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 that doesn't exist in the city. They don't no, no, no. Hear me, no, hear me out. Whenever okay. you step out of process, you create chaos. You are going to get people who are not from here to do work here and oversee two major systems. At one point, Baltimore had the fifth largest school system on the East Coast. We're small. But you had a school in every neighborhood. Look, the West Side, you can go from elementary school to get a PhD. You can go from elementary school to Douglas, from Douglas to BCC, from BCC to um, Coppin on the West Side. And this chick that makes this kind of money created a, an educational platform that dumbed our kids down. There's been scandal after scandal after scandal of them fixing grades, lying to parents, and, and creating and facilitating a school to prison pipeline. I want to put that, I want to put that woman in. And that goes back hate. to why are we making contracts where there is no performance measure? Because I mean, yeah, he's, but they're calling her a CEO. Like Brandon and Jaja Binks and Sheila Dixon. And Stephanie, but they're calling her a CEO. And yes, you never see a CEO or organization with this much scandal and not get fired. That's no, all I she, have to say. she need she need to be taken out back for real. She needs so, to but be, why won't they? Because like her contract, like for, from what I heard, is that they can't they can't they just renewed it. That's irresponsible. So that means how many more kids is gonna uh, graduate but not graduate? With I want to take toothpicks and push them up under her nails. I can't stand that oh, wow. woman. She is, a, she is a detriment. No, no, no. She's not just incompetent. She's dangerous. She is a detriment. Do you know that 40% of graduating seniors from Baltimore high schools have a 1.2 grade point average? So where, where are they going to go? They on my corner. She ought to be taken out and flogged. I can stand that woman. <laughs> Look, Kelly, uh, we didn't get to talk about the bike lanes uh, or the or the cutting down trees. We did talk about it for two weeks going on going down um, Gwen's what Falls. What else happened in that? Gwen's oh, Falls. We Gwen did talk Falls. about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's they not just cut. Gwen's Falls. It's not so, just so that's Gwen's part. Falls. So I think the part of the uh, you know Drood Hill Park getting getting done again and Hanlon Park. And then now these bike lanes, it certainly is in West Baltimore going to be a push to gentrify those areas. So if yeah, you're watching and you live there, don't sell your house. Um, stay there and, and make them put us out. But then it will maybe eminent domain and then you'll get ten dollars for it. But anyway, uh, we just got a lot of issues. Um it's it's forever, but we can't. I know. So, 
So do you have any more parting words, Kelly, about your activism yeah. and your community? Yeah. Um, what's coming um, up and anything coming up, anything we can, and, and we're going to get this information out about this. Uh, yeah, I did see that, Nicole, um, about the- Join, if you really yeah. want to know what's going on, join next door. No. I see you on there all the time, Kelly. I saw you, I think, yesterday or this morning. So, I'm, And I'm, I'm in all the neighborhoods. Look, no, you really want to know how white people feel about you? You better join next door. No, but for me, it's, information leveraging technology information for community action if you don't know that's why they can do this right so i will be posting my recording of the meeting that we attended i gotta I find her <laughs> where is this gonna be on instagram where where does it go i don't i don't use instagram as much because i i do have a personal life i'm like Right. <laughs> but next door, but next door, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, you, can, you can find Kelly on next door. She's yeah, fine. you find me on next door. Okay. And I will be um I posted the letter from uh email with the permission of Lawrence Bell that you know he y'all do know that the president of the new Auckland Trolley Community Association is a white dude. Yeah. Ooh, his name is Graham Coyle Allen. Is he, he new to the neighborhood or Hell is, yeah. he, is he like How did he get in? How did he, went, how did, what happened? He bought a house over on Arkin Trolley. Remember, uh, there were a couple of houses. But, but, how, but how did he, how did he win? Like, how did he become the, the representative? No, 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 no he you came. did not hear me. It's the new then he said He set up his own. That's just like me. I'm better go set up some neighborhood associates. No, <laughs> oh, oh. So, Arkin Trolley is a historical black neighborhood. So is um, Reservoir Hill, where we lived for nine years and decided I'm not doing three hundred fifty thousand for a rundown shell that is now gentrified. You got white people on white block walking flippants. Wow. Yeah. And so what he did, he bought a house on Arkin Trolley. He has a company called Graham Project, and he goes around the city, and he has community organizations like Barkley and over there uh, off Thirty Third and I don't know now. And he does these community projects like beautifying the crosswalks where they have jacked up traffic by choking out the um, uh, corners. So you got to make a wide turn. That's not safe. So he lives over here, live around corner. He started the new Auckland Trolley Community Association and the longstanding um, community um, neighbors in the area, 49 of them went to drop off his, their dues. He returned them. He did not accept black folks dues to be part of the new then the, city, then the city cannot recognize him. And if they do recognize him, then we're going to start and we're going to look into some title violations. The if email the city, is posted. If the city, but why know. are they even recognizing his they new They can't recognize him. If he's in bed yeah. with Brandon. He's part of the real. Look, look, no. We know this, but the public doesn't. But if he's refusing you based upon your race. The city no, cannot on, on. legally you said he's recognize. In bed with Brandon, him. But you talking about we need to protect our youth and do something. See, that's no, what no, I'm no. About I said that. I, 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 I said we have a, a we <laughs> look. We have a way of 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 eating our young. And what I mean by that is, do I think he could be brought into the fold? I want to say yes. I don't think so. I don't think so. Look, if you ever want to get something accomplished, you put a black woman in, in charge of. He needs somebody in his behind. Now, I'll tell you this. Kwaisi le leaned over to him when he was up at the um, new ambassador. It used to be Disco Skate. It's up yeah. on Liberty Heights. Uh, yeah, they're redoing that. Yeah. And it used, to be, it used to be Empire Hair School. My mother lives around the corner from me. And they're turning that into an arts um, yes. uh, venue. So there was so Kwaisi secured $3 million for it, asked the city to match, and Brandon was dragging his feet, so they did this, you know, photo op, and he leaned up and was like, hey, have you called so-and-so-and-so talking about Miss Hugh? Oh, yeah, that's good. 
Do you know that after the honorable Kwaisi and Fume, who got you all this money, told you to call that woman, he didn't? And the next day, you have your YouTube video. Right. Who did Listen to that? YouTube? I missed it. No, I'll have to so, send it to you. Okay. Brandon, so what happened is that after we met with Kwaisi, I was like, well, why don't we know about this? He was like, wait a minute, Brandon didn't tell you? I was like, wait a minute, we got awarded this money two months ago? on top of the 640 million dollars and so he was like you need to he so he, he put a bug in in brandon's ear yeah i'm telling i'm telling it all because sunlight is the best disinfectant and he didn't call her out of respect he did not call that woman he got in touch with her today yeah, now, I, can well, tell I, you, I, I really want to hear more um, about yeah. this new arc and Charlie because I'm here to tell you if he is denying people membership based upon race, then that is something that can be. Oh, that's illegal. Into. Oh, it's yeah. illegal. If the city cannot right. recognize right. him, and if right. they are recognizing him, so what we're going to do is we're going to yeah, we're going to try to get uh, more of your community members. Like we're going to try to get Mary Hughes on per perhaps next week. We're going to try to get her connected or the week after. Well, and I need people here. Like right now, the Liberty Square Community Association is kind of defunct. We have a president. He's amazing, Mr. Selwyn, but he's an elder. And with the pandemic, our elders got sick, some passed, and he hasn't been able to revive it. So I was brought on because all this started because I opened up 311 tickets because I wanted more lighting and speed humps for safety measures to counteract what's going on at the corner. That's how all of this started. We need folks in the Liberty Square area to join. Um, we're in good standing. Um, I, I read the charter. So what's going on? Liberty Square, Panway, Parkway, all the areas within the 21215 fall under, and Arkin Trolley, fall under the Greater Mondawmin Community Coalition. Mm -hmm. Now, now, wait a minute. Ms. Hutchins, Adeline Hutchins has been the long-standing um, president of this organization, and she's about to retire. We think Graham, that white boy, is going to make a play for the, because the GMCC and the chemicals people in Cherry Hill are the two oldest community recognized in good standing chartered um, uh, community associations in Baltimore and power. So if he created, look at the workflow. You, you move into a crime-ridden, drug-infested, Black community. You create your own community organization that you then send to the presidency. You deny your Black neighbors the right to pay dues to join. And then you get disbanded, because that's what we're going to do. Yeah, and because... Then, yeah, as no, long as the city doesn't recognize him, he can go be KKK by himself uh, in his what house. Do you mean not recognize they him. Can't. He's doing projects but if he's all over with the, the city. mayor. He's doing projects all over the city. He's doing projects. But is he doing okay? But my question is, is he doing the projects as as his company or is he doing it in the name of a, of that association that he is refusing? Are they are they acknowledging I asked for the, I asked this association? For the I said, where's the demarcation? Because isn't that a conflict of interest? I'll post the emails. Why don't I do that? <laughs> well, you yeah, we definitely got a lot to talk about going on there. And we, we have to get together. So we're going to have to get a group collectively together to make sure that we that does not become a recognized association if you're not accepting the dues of. But, but uh, you know, again, I wouldn't give his. And that's federal, baby. I wouldn't give him anything. can take that federal. That's yeah, 100%. I wouldn't give him yeah. anything. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't recognize him as a community. The community they can't. does not recognize him. Uh, well, he is. But if you don't know that this is happening. So, yeah, run, tell that. Yeah. Call yeah. me Martin Lars. Run, tell that. Torrance but, facilitated getting GMCC 150000 to hire an ex-director and stuff. Yeah, guys, you know what? It's 849. Um, it's infested. Th this has been, uh, yeah, we've been, we've been a little everywhere. My head is killing me. I'm going to have to eat something or, um, you know, Brandon may have me arrested. Or drink something. Smack, smack him around a little bit. So let me go <laughs> ahead. Um, yeah. So, so I, 
So, so the next time we gather, I think it would be apropos if everybody get their Afro wig and put it on. Tang t-shirts and Malcolm X glasses because we are for the people. Okay. And then right after that, we'll go get some advice from people that don't care about our people. And I, you know. I, I, I must say this: not only has this been fun, entertaining, but y'all some bad chicks. Oh, bad. Okay. <laughs> do your no, thing. I'm no, no. I'm always no. the bad cop. Nicole can't take it. She's like, is she really going off? And no, look, she oh, I love it. Said. I love it. Look, I love it. I mean, you know, because I like for people to speak their peace. I'm like a silent storm. You know what I mean? Because I know where to creep them. <laughs> you know I'm what I'm biggie. saying? I'm biggie all day long. I, I speak my piece <laughs> with my piece. Hey. From my mouthpiece. But if we, if we, you can't mobilize if people aren't aware. You got to meet people where they are. We should be down shake and bake that reopen. Hey, voter drive registration. Go. That's what we're doing. doing the voter registration. We're going to start Let's that do it. very soon. They uh, because need to got they, they, coming up. They, got they need to widen the lens because, yeah, yeah, that impacts you. The money you, you may not own a home, but you spend taxes on, I mean, you spend money that generates sales, you know, right. sales tax. You know, we allow these folks to discount our, 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 our base, our Shaniquas, our Pookies. Our, 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 we discount and we do it ourselves. These are people who can't for themselves because they can't see out the way and i'm telling people if you do not mobilize this is what they get away with you need to show up where he is when you gonna meet with us you you meet with graham and them we're gonna get the the that yeah yeah so if it wasn't show up COVID. With afro wigs. we need to show up with afro wigs well saturday september 18th he gonna be on live on zoom yeah i'll get that three. we'll get that information we're out put, we'll get yeah the, we're gonna put the link out yeah, we'll have Donnie get the information out. We'll get the information out about the. Um, yeah, we'll get the slides when we get them from you from the meeting with uh, Quasi. Quasi I got you all on that. And then um, we're going to keep putting information out for the, our community. So thank you all for tuning in. Kelly, we're going to get uh, Linda and, and Mary Hughes, Linda Bats and Mary Hughes, all of you all. Y'all think I'm something? Linda. <laughs> Yeah, we've had Linda on twice, so they've Woo! gotten a taste, but not Woo! talking about her community issues. So that would be great to have her on. No, thank you. I know, I, I know this. Mm. Um, okay. You're awesome. I love it. And, and we're we going to do this. They, they, fear the turtle. You better fear the black woman, the black Baltimore woman, because we, we ain't built like nobody else. You can't find a black Baltimore woman that won't give it to you. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and look out for our voter registration driver. I'm trying to get some things together where we can start hitting the streets and getting people to, we're going to change the numbers in every yeah. election going forward. And we are going to be educating you all. Um, this is where you get the truth on blackusa.news and, and be more news.com. Um, it's, it's straight from the streets. It's straight from the community. So thank you all for joining us on sister biz. Nicole, you want to close us out? Whew, this has been phenomenal. I met some powerhouses tonight, um, and I hope to definitely link with you guys uh, in the future, Kelly. This has been great. Um, we I would love, I would we love to to be able to come, you know, to your neighborhood and check it out. Um, I'm in the process now, probably trying to organize my own the neighborhood association over there towards the Shipley Hill uh, area of great. Well, if, uh, if you want to find us. Every Wednesday, we're over at the uh, farmer's market because we grow and sell microgreens. Okay. 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 So, I mean, once again, it's unification because the, the entire city right now is in uproar. It, 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 everywhere we're from the school. For, we're prime for it. I'm, everywhere. I'm for it. I've, never, have, I've never seen it. I've never seen um, this early in an administration so many issues, so many people that are just, you know, uh, disenfranchised. I, I don't even know if disenfranchised is the, is the correct word because it's deeper than that. So it's my abuse. thing is, you know, you it's, it it's, it's, it's huge. Abuse. It's and abusive. It is very abusive. So 
you know, and my thing is, is do we have a chance to turn it around? I think so. If we could unite, we got to unite and fight. That's it. We have to unite and fight. That That is the answer. Um, and putting some pressure on their necks. We need to put pressure and say, look, you're investing millions and millions of dollars across MLK. Look at it. And look and and look at, I mean, I drive down some of these side streets of West Baltimore and I think I'm in Afghanistan. So I'm just going to say, again, drive. I do. I'd be, I, I be like, well, where well, the hell is that? Well, us to. Wow. I mean, dang, it's happening here. But it's the truth. <laughs> it's like, you know, you, 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 you knock down our houses, you take our houses, and then you won't cut the grass. Wait a minute. And then you do road improvements that actually cause structural damage that you don't report on. That's what happened with the subway. Ooh, that's a whole nother story. Ooh. See, it's a lot. So yeah, I mean, I know he's got his hands full. Um, yeah, a uh, money. But my thing is, is that we have to hold them accountable. We have to hold them all accountable. Hands um, full of what, Nicole? He hired a city administrator. Listen, Nicole, we're not going to do this tonight. We're going to get out because I, <laughs> I'm making no excuses. Uh, look, look, I'm going to leave you with two words. Two Listen. Words. It's three and a half more years. So we got to be able to tug and make some powerful choices. We have to unite. We got to get ready to vote him out and everybody else. We got three and a half more years, though. Why so are deputy mayors? And why do we have four of them? Two words. I don't have no answer for that. But we have to we have to unite and fight and put pressure. Because if we don't, just think, three and a half more years, all, all hell, all the black going to be gone if we don't. That's the the pressure is happening. We went from not knowing about it to him doing the YouTube, and, and I, I'm creating. And I can't business. wait to see it. I cannot wait to see it because I will be it's on there comment. Offensive. It's a. Who did the YouTube? Did you do the you? Who did? The, I gotta see it because I don't know. Make sure you send us those links, Kelly. You know, <laughs> I'm like, who did the YouTube? We're gonna post them for our, for our, we're gonna you know post it on uh, our social media. So just look out for that. Um, thank you all for joining us. And please have a good evening. And we'll try. Unite and fight. This, this was wild. It was a gunfight tonight. <laughs> unite and fight. We have good to unite, night. And unite and fight. And fight. Look, look, I don't take no knives to a gunfight here. <laughs>